Hi guys, this is Steven here and today we are going to be talking about U. U is basically a single value that re represents the color of something. Not necessarily the brightness or the luminance, the pure color of something. It's a single value. It usually gets measured in degrees. Now there's a lot of ways to represent U. The one of the ways that I like the most is using a color wheel because it gives you the impression that U is basically something that starts at the point, ends at a point, but it is linked, so it goes in a circle. You also get a lot of other color wheels out there that doesn't really follow the U model, but the U model that I like best, or the color wheel that represents U the most accurately, that I think is the one with red on top, and then at 120 degree angles we have green, and at 240 degree angles we have blue. So that gives us the whole circle that goes from red, green, and blue, your RGB. So it follows that same sequence. Now one of the very interesting things about you is that you follow science. And the science of light is all, or the color of light is all linked to the frequency of the light. Where your lowest level frequency of light is red, which is right on top. And then as your frequency of light increases, it'll go red, orange, yellow, green, and then obviously blue, and then it goes to your um, purples and your magentas back to red. Now, as we know, technically your magentas doesn't really exist because it's not really an actual frequency of light, but obviously we can still see it. Our mind makes that up. So that's why they include it in the color wheel that is the U color wheel. Now, a very, another very interesting thing is, obviously, because it follows science, it actually means that when you look at a rainbow, you will see all the colors that represent you, always starting with red on top. So that's why I like the whole red on top idea. Um, and interestingly enough, also, if you look at a rainbow, there is no pink. Uh, once again, proving to us that pink doesn't really exist. It's purely a fictional color made up by our minds. And also, the nice thing about you is that or I don't think it's technically U, I think it's RGB. RGB follows U, so it's in that order, RGB. It goes as the angle increases, it is R, G, and B. Same with CMYK. Obviously K is just a shortcut, so we'll just remove the K, and we sit with CMY. CMY is obviously the whole circle just sort of flipped around. So you would start at the bottom, which is your cyan, your magenta, and your yellow. So it follows the same order. So it actually all makes a lot of sense. And also if you look at the opposites of color, if you ever uh, work with color contrast, if you want to make an image in Photoshop pop a bit, you need color contrast. And in order to do color contrast, you need the exact opposite of a certain color. And if you use the U color wheel, that also makes sense. So the opposite of um, red would be cyan. It's on the opposite end of the wheel. The opposite of yellow would be blue. It's on the opposite end of the wheel. So it's very easy to get the opposite of a color. You just find the color on the wheel and then you look at exactly the other side of the wheel. That would be your op opposite color. And with that, you can create very interesting and very um, shocking and very popping images that really like grabs your attention. Now, in most of the color wheels out there, it works in degrees. So your degrees is on top, and it's obviously an angle in measured in degrees. So degrees is on top, and it goes to 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270 degrees, and back to 360 degrees. Now, when computers came along, obviously, we wanted to save this value somewhere in a digital format. Now, the most convenient way to save it would be in a byte, which is sort of nicely truncated. It's almost exactly the right size we need except a byte falls a little bit short, a uh, byte being 8 bits. So obviously you hear 8-bit color a lot. So what would happen, a byte only goes from 0 to 255. That's the only range a byte can cover. So if you want anything more than that, you kind of have to use two bytes, which is double the space. So what they do is instead of saying, okay, let's use 0 to 255, it's not a nice value to use because it's not very divisible, especially when you divide, divide it by three, which is where your, your main colors lie, your R, your G, and your B. If you divide it by three, you get to like a weird number. And then they decided to let's make it rather zero to 240. 
because that means every 800 slots or 800 points you get a main color and then it's very easy to calculate main colors as well as the in-between colors so that means R will be 0, green would be 80 and blue would be 160 and thus you get your full circle that goes to 240 obviously every 40 degrees would be your yellow and your uh, cyan and magenta which actually makes it very easy to use so that's why some of the models that you get works from 0 to 240 and other models works from 0 to 260 the 0 to 260 is more your traditional model and your 0 to 240 is more purely for programming and computers so that is the basics of U U is simply a single value that represents a color it is there's no the data that we give in that value there's no brightness so we don't actually specify brightness we don't specify a saturation it's purely the color or as I refer to in science the chroma of that color and it's measured in degrees in the traditional model and obviously when using computers it goes from 0 to 240 and every 80 there is obviously a main color so obviously if you use the old model the 360 degree model or the traditional model that means that every 120 degrees there's a main color there's two ways where you can use U when it comes to Photoshop and one is to simply select a color so you start with nothing and you just want to basically add a new color then you can use U the other thing is if you actually start with a base image and you want to adjust the U of the image what that will do is it will load the U of every single pixel of that whole image and then whatever U you select to judge U you select <laughs> whatever U value you select to adjust it with it will take all those U values and adjust it so the whole image will shift around the um, U wheel it obviously depends on where every single pixel sits in the U wheel so if a pixel sits at a certain location and you set adjust the wheel by 10 it that pixel will adjust it by 10 degrees the pixel right next to it might sit at another location in the U wheel and you tell it to adjust it also by obviously 10 degrees so it will be adjusted by 10 degrees so that way your whole image will sort of shift and the colors will change at 180 degrees you will get a full negative of the image but this is purely a color negative it's not a luminance or brightness negative so it's not going to look exactly like a negative if you would have taken an image a image and make it a negative but the colors will be a negative so it's sort of halfway to a negative saturation is how true the color is or how far the color is away from gray and if something has got a high saturation it's very far away from gray so let's say we have red but the red has got a high saturation it means it's a deep 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 red if it's got a low saturation it's closer to gray so it's like a grayish red and that's basically what saturation is it's fairly straightforward if you have a color wheel some color wheels include saturation some color wheels you have the wheel and in the middle you actually have gray so as you have the colors it sort of fades to gray and then where your color sits around the wheel is your U, and how far it sits from the center is your saturation the last one obviously is the brightness the brighter a value is the closer it is to white and the darker is the closer it is to black so with those three with U saturation and brightness you can make up any color that exists first of all is the color which is the U that's the base the raw actual color then how far it is from the center the saturation how true that color is and then lastly how bright it is is it closer to white or is it a very dark color and with that you can use any color you want and that is called U saturation or brightness so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the computer and I'm going to show you how to use this information obviously if you you might be working in Photoshop or you might be a computer programmer and in both cases you can actually use U if you understand it properly so the first thing is that 
Hue and saturation and brightness can also help you to pick a certain color, especially if you know that the color should be green or halfway between green and blue or whatever you want to pick. So obviously in Photoshop, you just click your color picker, you just click on the color there, and then you'll see that the three values that is displayed here, HSB, is your hue, saturation, and brightness. Now your hue, which is the topmost one, that is determined purely by the slider here. So you can see as I slide it, the only thing that actually changes is your U. What you actually see here is your true color with a 100% saturation and 100% brightness. That's actually the color you see in this bar here. It is upside down, whereas the zero degrees is at the bottom, and as you move up, the degrees increases. So it's basically an upside down rainbow. With the rainbow, obviously your red is on top, then it's your yellow, your green, and your then obviously your, your cyan, your blue. So um, that's one way to adjust your hue. So you can pick the color you want. You'll see obviously every 120 degrees, there's a primary color. So that would be red, which is at zero, because we start counting at zero. And at 120 degrees, if I type 120 in there, I would get a full green. If I add another 120 uh, to 40, you would get blue. So that's your RGB. You obviously get your in-between colors, which is a CMYK. Um, they obviously, because they're exactly the opposite, they don't start at zero, they start at 180, which is the other side of the circle. So um, that's where your CMYK starts. So your C, which is your Cyan, would start at 180. You obviously also add 120, which will put you at 300, which is your M, your magenta. And then obviously it goes around because it's a circle. It'll go back to 60 degrees, which is your yellow. So yeah, you can see also your CMY represented in this channel here. Yeah. So basically, if you base if you start at zero every 60 degrees, you would get you would hit either a a, a normal color or a or a main color or a auxiliary color. So every 60 degrees, you would hit either red, yellow, or green, um, cyan, um, obviously blue, etc. etc. I'm not going to go through the whole thing now. Obviously, you've got this little block over here. Now, this block actually serves a purpose in that it is, uh, it's not just what you see is what you get. The horizontal, or well, the left and right axis of this block is your saturation, which is that value there. So, if you are on the left side, your saturation is on zero, which is gray, as I discussed earlier. If your saturation is on 100, then you get the full color, the true blue. So that's your saturation. It's basically just a, a gradient between your color and gray. And then obviously lastly is your brightness. Your brightness is the up-down side. So if you go up and down, you'll see that it'll actually change only your brightness. Nothing else will change. So your brightness being a scale basically between um, your color and black. So the one is sort of between your color and white, and the other one's between your color and black, which is your brightness and your saturation. You can obviously change it here, and it'll give you different representations. So if you choose saturation here, scale here is your saturation, and your left and right is then your U, and your up and down is your brightness. So you can switch between these values and see what you get. It's very interesting. Um, obviously, whatever value you select here, yeah, if you select brightness here, yeah, it means that the scale here is your brightness. If you select U here, yeah, the scale here is your U. So whatever you select here yeah, is basically the scale. You can even select your U here, yeah, go to, let's say, green. Um, let's get a full green. Let's type in 120. And then if you switch to um, saturation, it still retains the same color. So your U stays there. Then you can adjust your saturation. You can decide how much green you want. Maybe let's say like 80% green. And then you can switch to brightness and you can adjust purely the brightness of that green. So um, yeah, just another way to help you pick a certain color. And usually if you want to make uh, manipulations to an image, so you have an image and you just want to manipulate it, you usually use uh, HSL, U Saturation and Luminance, because you're adjusting something that already exists. Now, in this image, you'll see the grass on the side here. Yeah, it's not a very deep green, and also it was a little bit dry, so it's not ex there's a lot of yellow as well, and I want to make that more green. So what I can do is I can just switch to the um, HSL sliders here. Now remember I said HSL is what's used when you actually are changing an image, 
and HSB is used when you are picking a color so you start with nothing and you are simply setting a color now if we go to the HSL all of these that you see here they basically are sliders based on a certain U range. So you'll see this is basically the colors of a rainbow. If you look in the middle down, red, orange, yellow, green, uh, cyan, blue, um, purple, and magenta. So these are sort of the colors of the rainbow. Obviously, we don't have magenta because that doesn't exist technically. Um, these are this is actually the exactly the rainbow as you'll see it. And it doesn't matter which tab you go to, you see those colors. So if I do a, a, a slider change here, it will look at that color that is in the image and just change the U of that specific color. Now what I like to do here is with the U selected, I can actually change the green a little bit. I just increase it like a little bit and you'll see the grass will actually become more green. If I push, push it the other way, it'll be more yellow. So I like to just push it slightly and then... If your image doesn't contain a lot of yellows that are not that's not grass, like in this image, all the yellows in the image pretty much is grass. So I could even increase the yellow one and make that more green as well. So you'll see if I if I obviously take it to the extremes, you can see it changes the color of the grass here at the back and the spot over here. So I'll just boost it a little bit and then you get nice green grass. Um, around obviously everywhere where there is any vegetation it is just nice and green it just looks like it was taken at a different season what i what you can also do is to make the green a little bit more um obviously poppy is you can increase the saturation of the greens a little bit and sometimes we can even do it with the yellow so that's also a little bit popped the luminance you can sometimes bring down if you bring it down you'll actually see that it makes the green a bit darker and also do it to the yellows Okay, the yellows doesn't work that well. So we'll leave the yellows that is, as it is. We can even bring the yellows up slightly. So it creates a bit of, instead of just color contrast between the grass and the chicken, we can actually create contrast inside the grass itself. itself. So you don't really create color contrast. You create brightness contrast by pushing the yellow up and the green down. So just another way of, um, yeah, making your images pop a little bit more simply understanding how you works so here's another example how you can use you in computer programming simply to save some space and save less images and rather use existing images and just use changes to the you on that image to create more images so what we've done this is a web app this is a dot to indicate where the location of a vehicle is and um what we've done is we've created this dot it's got lots of shades and stuff on it but if you look at the um the u value of every single pixel in here we try to keep it as close to zero as possible remember 360 is technically zero so you'll see as i move it around and you look here everything stays very close to 160 so the u everywhere is red and obviously the black will be zero so we don't really have any other use values in this picture except for red and what we can do now is as soon as we load this image in a web app we can um, with special css filters we can change the u in this image and that means we can create different color dots as long as we use the same u throughout the image when we create the image it's easy to change this. So now simply by adjusting it, yeah, I can change this dot to any color dot I want. I can go to, uh, yeah, from cyan, green. Uh, I can get a yellow dot, so like somewhere, yeah. Uh, orange dot, red dot, obviously magenta, uh, purple, blue, um, and back to cyan again. So this is a very interesting way how you can, instead of creating or loading the same image, 50 times the different colors you can simply just change the u on that image and only have one so it uses less memory it uses less bandwidth and it's a lot easier to develop as well so that's another way where we can use u okay guys i hope that has been very valuable i hope that you've learned something new and you can actually use this information and apply it in your daily life it doesn't matter what you do uh, if you fancy this video then please like it if you want to see more of my videos then subscribe it Till next time, ciao.